story of me. Back in about 280 AD, I was born in Patra near uh, Mira in modern Turkey. Uh, I started off uh, as a member of a rather wealthy family. And uh, I decided I had a calling. I became a monk. And people in my town were very, very uh, uh, happy with the, the piety and the kindness that I showed them. And uh, I decided to give away, being a monk, I decided to give away all my worldly possessions. Well, I think the one story that uh, has served me so well over the years is an incident that happened when I was walking down one of the streets and uh, there were uh, uh, a number of people that were living on that block that had uh, some difficulties with regards to finances. And uh, not like today, uh, what you ended up having is uh, a, sl a single father with three young daughters and he didn't have the dowry to, uh, to pay for them to get married. Well, the choices back then were pretty limited. He either ended up raising the, the children till old, to old age, or he sold them off in slavery, which is a terrible thing to, to go through. And uh, I really felt bad for the family. So uh, I originally tossed some coins into uh, their window, and uh, they, of course, appreciated that a lot, but it wasn't quite enough to to build the dowry up, and I had the money. So over the course of uh, a few months, I discovered that the easiest way, instead of throwing it through the windows, I didn't want them to see me do it. So uh, the, the houses back then uh, had flat roofs, and I managed to get up on top of the roofs and throw some coins down into the chimney, and the, the, uh, in a lot of cases, the, the money would bounce off the hearth and actually end up in their stockings that were left out to dry. And yes, they did wear stockings back then. They, they also went barefoot, but that's another story. Anyway, uh, they had thought originally that it was a gift from the gods. And they were so excited about it that they told all their neighbors. And it escalated and it eventually got to the point where I was giving away all my money to the town. And uh, eventually they did, of course, find out that it was actually me. And uh, uh, eventually uh, I did end up with very little money left. And I went on, I became a, uh, a bishop. And uh, eventually I was honored and actually became sainted, uh, saint, given sainthood. Well, the years went on. My life back then had passed away and, and I was regenerated in many forms. And uh, it came about in different cultures. I was, I was called different things. Uh, uh, one of the wonderful things is uh, at one time I was called Sinterklaas, which is Dutch for St. Nicholas. And it actually ended up uh, making its way to the United States. And... Uh, uh, in 1804, a John Pintard, he was a member of the New York's Historical Society, dis distributed these woodcuts of me at the Society's annual meeting. They're very nice looking. The backgrounds of the engravings contained what is now my familiar image, uh, including the stockings filled with toys and fruit hanging uh, over the fireplace, which I thought was absolutely wonderful. Then in 1809, Washington Irving helped to popularize the Sinterklaas stories uh, when he referred to uh, me as the patron saint of New York in his book, The History of New York. As his prominence grew, Sinterklaas was described as everything from a rascal with a blue three-cornered hat. I really thought that was a good one. Uh, it was, uh, and... Uh, a red waistcoat and yellow stockings to a man wearing a broad-rimmed hat and a large pair of Flemish trunk hose. Well, as the years gone uh, went on, uh, gift giving, especially mainly centered around children, became an important part of the Christmas celebration. 
and uh, it really went on throughout the 19th century. And you saw, of course, the store Santa Clauses were, were showing up. And uh, it was really, really uh, a, an exciting time. I mean, we had people like Thomas Nast, who, who did a wonderful job of, of portraying me. And, and, and uh, of course, uh, they went on to things like... Uh, uh, Miracle on 34th Street, which was one of my favorite movies, by the way. Oh, 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 oh I love that movie. Uh, it was uh, The first one came out in 1947, and uh, it was played by young Natalie Wood. I love that movie. And uh, uh, it really showed how the spirit of Christmas works. Now, the Macy Santa that appeared on Macy's Thanksgiving Parade uh, is has carried on through in New York City and all over the country for years. And it, you always saw Santa with a young child on his lap while they told him what they wanted for Christmas. So Santa Claus is known all over the world by different names. I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, you've heard of Christ Kind, Kris Kringle, uh, Père Noel, uh, you know, uh, just all kinds of different names. In Scandinavia, it was a jolly elf named Doltment, which was thought to deliver gifts in a sleigh drawn by goats. It is essentially the spirit of Christmas we're talking here. Now, this really brings up a point that I, I really wanted to talk about. And uh, wh who and what is Santa Claus? And how... Santa Claus is portrayed as being this person that flies all around the world with his eight tiny reindeer and delivering presents to every good little boy and girl. And how can he do that all in one night? Well, it's always been said that seeing is believing. I, I counter that because it isn't seeing is not believing and believing is not seeing. Belief is believing in something without tangible proof that the person is there. If you see Santa Claus, you don't believe in him. You know he exists. It's the same as believing in a, in a higher being, believing in God. If you saw God, if you physically saw God, you would know God exists. So you wouldn't believe in them anymore. You would know and that's the beauty of belief, accepting something without the tangible evidence that the person is there. How does Santa Claus and the spirit of Christmas move around the world? It works through us, through your parents and loved ones. The secret of living is giving. Giving without expectation, not give to get. Giving without expectation. That's the beauty of Christmas. Now, I want to share with you these little things about Christmas because it's important to not only me, but to everybody. Christmas should be a time of love. It's a time of giving, a time of family. And it, these days, it's it's been tough. But at the same rate, know that you're loved. Someone out there does love you. And I want you to enjoy Christmas and this holiday season the best way you know how. Now, on my channel here, I am going to be talking a little bit more about how I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a numismatist, so I deal with collecting coins. And I'm going to be sharing different types of coins that you could collect or you could give to your friends and family at Christmas time. So I encourage you to come and visit me and have some fun. This is, it's not going to be all dry stuff and know that we're going to have a great holiday season. <laughs> I'm going to love having you with me and enjoy my channel. Bye-bye.